have a, a short presentation we would like to uh, share with you, and uh, we I would like to invite up uh, Jackie Bird. Jackie Bird is the uh, the daughter of the founding pastor of this church, Jack Dean, and uh, Jack Dean got the call from um, down south. He was pastoring a, a fairly large church and felt God calling him to come up to a small little house church here in Bowie, Maryland, and be the first pastor of Grace Baptist Church. And uh, Jackie uh, came along with him, and um, th that was 50 years ago. And this year, we are celebrating our 50-year anniversary as a church and great Christ's faithfulness through those years. Uh, and so uh, October is going to be a big celebration. But leading up to that, we wanted to share a little bit about our story so that we can celebrate truly what God has done uh, through our history. So I'd like to invite up Jackie Bird to share uh, about our history. Would you please welcome uh, Jackie Bird? <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Just about eight hours from now, the team who wins the coin toss will kick off, starting Super Bowl number 48. I know that some of you cannot remember when there was not a Super Bowl. <laughs> but I want to tell you that two years before the very first Super Bowl, our little family, just mom, dad, and me, moved from the desert of West Texas to the suburbs of exciting Washington, D.C. My dad, Jack Dean, had been hired as the pastor of a small mission church in Bowie, Maryland. Which brings me to my first story. Earlier that year, Dad was invited to come to the little church and preach in view of a call. They wanted to see whether he would be interested in becoming their pastor and whether they would be interested in asking him. This is the exciting new freeway. Route 50. <laughs> it led to what was called at the time Bel Air at Bowie. Mom and I stayed behind in Snyder. We didn't really think that Dad would move. He had ha turned down several opportunities to do so in the last several years. So after church on Sunday night, he called us on the phone. We asked him, how'd you like it? Dad was typically a man of few words, which I know is hard to believe for a minister, but it is true. <laughs> But he began talking a blue streak. He told us about driving through the Levitt community before morning church. You should see it, he said. Houses and houses and houses. Almost every other one, he said, had little children out playing in the yard, not in Sunday school. His enthusiasm was delightful, and it was contagious. When we hung up the phone, I went to mom's room and said, well, I'm thinking we better start packing. We were sad to leave our home of many years, but still excited to help dad as he followed the Lord. This is the house that the small group hoped to purchase for a parsonage, 3509 Maybank Lane, a home for the pastor and his family. Dad had actually told us that it looked a lot like West Texas, no grass and no trees over four feet tall. <laughs> you can't see well on the slide, but all the new houses had a very odd feature. I'm sort of wondering if anyone in this congregation actually remembers this. Right in the middle of looking like cookie cutter little boxes made of ticky tacky, they all had a wildly psychedelic neon colored door. The door at 3509 Maybank was bright orange. I painted it in two days. <laughs> this is the building that came to be known as the Dean Hotel. The people of the church were meeting at a remodeled rancher at the corner of Beller Drive and Shelter Lane. In the bottom picture, you can see Beller Drive as it looked in the fall of 1964. We arrived Friday, and on Saturday evening, the church gave a welcome reception for us. Here, you see Mom and Dad smiling brightly behind the punch bowl. Mom is wearing the corsage presented to her by the church for the occasion. This picture is Dad, Mom, and me in the receiving line. Notice the cat's eye glasses of the time? My fabulous fashion statement. I have to share with you, though, that Toby Bird told me years later that had I been wearing those glasses when he first met me, he never would have asked me out. <laughs> This is standing around at the Welcome Fellowship. On the left is my grandfather, James Dean. 
Grandpa Dean helped us move up here and helped in many building programs that we had later. This is just the beginning of his dedicated and loyal service to Grace Baptist. On the right, far right, is our very first choir director, Forrest Walls, and his wife, Phyllis. Before Sunday school, there was an opening assembly. In other words, we had church two or three times during the morning service. But there was usually a song, a brief devotional, and a prayer. I put this picture in to point out the hats, pearls, gloves, worn by the well-dressed ladies of the day. And the corsage that they gave mom and me sort of goes along with, with that day. Now, it's just going to take a second to see our entire Sunday school. That's it right there. There's um, the preschool, the junior class. That's the whole youth group right there in the bottom left. And there are the adults. This next picture demonstrates that even a small congregation, and it wasn't us cropping that cut forest out of it. You can see with the paper there on the left. The newspaper photographer just cut forest out on and on. Uh, this picture demonstrates that even a small congregation can have effective choir and music programs. It was taken for the newspaper to advertise our first Christmas program. Here, Dad is making announcements and getting ready to preach. Notice the board on the right of the slide, a very common church feature of the day. It has the attendance and offering information for the church. Attendance the week before we arrived was 23. If you want to see the board closer, it's on the display where we, that we have out here for in the beginning with the old pictures and things out there. Here are four men whose enthusiasm still warms my heart, and you should know who they are, might like to. On the left is Bill Mantooth, who worked for Southern Railway downtown. Bill was devoted to this mission work, and he gave much from a heart full of love. Next to Bill is Don Johnson, who worked for Congressman John Dowdy of Texas. Don was the all-round good guy, hysterically funny, a great sense of humor, and a big old heart for missions in the Mid-Atlantic area. On the other side of my dad is Lester White, the treasurer at the time. Lester was in the military, and you know, he hopped a fighter jet out to West Texas to help us move. He drove the moving truck all the way back to Maryland. Don, Bill, and Dad have gone to heaven before us. But I hope you will make it a point to meet Lester at the celebration in October. As the little congregation began to grow, we won a huge trophy for the biggest Sunday school percentage increase in one year. And there was not enough space there for that growth. During one short business meeting after Sunday morning service, everyone agreed that Don and Pastor Dean would, as soon as possible, visit the people in the three-bedroom colonial right there behind the church. You see it there? And see if they would be willing to sell it. The visit that later, later that afternoon must have been incredible because neither Dad nor Don could stop talking about it. When Don asked the couple if they would be willing to give the church the first right of refusal if they ever sold their house, the man and woman looked at each other astonished. Did you tell? They asked simultaneously. Turns out they had decided that very morning to sell their house and planned to list it with a realtor on Monday. Here's the house with the Grace Baptist sign in front of it. Absolute proof that God is in the business of answering the prayers of his people and making sure there's plenty of room for children to learn about Jesus. Our theme verse is Psalm 145.4 for the 50th anniversary. It's on your insert, and it is... One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And that is what we hope to do during this celebration. Today, Super Bowl Sunday, we are kicking off a year of celebration. After all, half a century is not a small thing. I keep trying to figure out, you know, how all this could be older than me. And I, I just can't figure it out how I was there and it's older, you know. <laughs> Between now and October... We're remembering the vision, enthusiasm, and sacrifices of those who came before us. Today, I've told you about the 1960s. In the next few months, you will hear others talk about later decades in our history and our wonderful and exciting hopes for the future with our wonderful and exciting young pastors whose vision we are following. The NFL has eight hours until they kick off the game tonight. My Son-in-law, fascinated with figures, figured out that we have eight months until we kick off our celebration of 50 great years in October. So mark your calendars for October 10 through the 12th. 
the big celebration weekend. And from now to then, we are going to have a lot of fun. Thank you.